All right, let's work through this fascinating case together. Starting with the left lower limb x-ray, I see posteromedial soft tissue swelling. There's no cortical destruction of the adjacent bone, which is reassuring in some ways. Additionally, there's atrophy of the distal soft tissues and atherosclerotic vascular calcifications, which might suggest some chronic vascular compromise, but that's not our primary concern here. Now, looking at the MRI of the lower limb, there's a large, heterogeneous, multiseptated, lobulated soft tissue mass in the posterior soft tissue of the proximal lower leg. It measures about 18 by 8 by 11 centimeters. On T1-weighted imaging, it's predominantly low signal with some high signal internal foci, which could represent hemorrhage. On T2-weighted imaging, the lesion is high signal, and importantly, there's no signal dropout on stir, ruling out significant fat components. The adjacent bony cortex is intact with no evidence of a breach. When we move to the MRI of the whole spine, the findings become more concerning. There's widespread patchy low T1 signal in the vertebral bodies and some posterior elements, and this signal is lower than the intervertebral discs, which is unusual. There's anterior wedging of thoracic vertebrae, resulting in kyphoscoliosis with some end plate indentations. However, there's no definite canal encroachment or compromise of the spinal cord or cauda equina. Putting these observations together, we're looking at an aggressive soft tissue lesion in the left lower leg, which could very well represent a soft tissue sarcoma. The high T1 foci within the mass might indicate areas of hemorrhage. The widespread patchy low T1 signal in the vertebral bodies is highly suggestive of infiltration, likely from metastases. This pattern raises the suspicion of metastatic disease, potentially from the sarcoma or another primary malignancy, such as prostate cancer. The vertebral changes could also fit with myelomatous infiltration, so clinical history is key here. Next steps? Urgent referral to a regional sarcoma team is critical to plan for a tissue biopsy, ensuring it's within a field that will be subsequently surgically excised. At the same time, an urgent oncology opinion is needed to assess whether prophylactic radiotherapy might be necessary given the risk of vertebral collapse due to infiltration. Radiologically, complete staging is essential. This includes a nuclear medicine bone scan to look for further skeletal involvement and a CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis to identify potential primaries or additional metastatic disease. It underscores the importance of correlating imaging findings across modalities and anatomical regions to understand the extent of disease and plan appropriate management. If you're finding cases like this both challenging and rewarding, make sure to subscribe to Radiology Made Easy. Turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And as always, best of luck with your studies and exams.